Hello again, welcome back to more Americanisms Explained. Hope you've been enjoying them so far. Um, let's get right into it. More high school stuff. <clears throat> so, do school lockers exist? Yes, yes they do. Um, this is pretty typical, although... Oh, wow, really dirty. I didn't realize that the lockers in this picture looked that bad. Anyway, um, in the U.S., uh, the school day is broken up into class periods, and I know that other uh, countries do the same thing. Uh, however, the way I understand the, the Japanese system is that the students stay in the class and the teachers move around. In the U.S., uh, and again, I could be wrong. I'm just reading uh, stuff on the Internet, so I have no direct experience of Japanese high school life. Um, I only have high, uh, I only have experience with U.S. high school, so um, <clears throat> your day is broken into periods, uh, and each period is a different class that you're going to, right? Uh, and so, instead of bringing your bringing all your books and um, papers and pens and pencils and all that stuff from class to class, you store everything in your locker. And there's a short period of time between classes when uh, you go back to your locker, put away the stuff from the previous class, and get the stuff ready for your next class. Uh, this has actually gotten to be uh, even more important to have these lockers. When I was in high school, uh, you could go to your locker, uh, <clears throat> take out all, you know, go to school in the morning, take out all your stuff, put it in your locker, uh, get everything you need for your first class, put it in your backpack, and then go to your first class. Uh, they don't want kids bringing backpacks to class anymore. So they want the kids to leave all their their backpacks in their lockers because who knows what could be hiding in your backpack. So instead of allowing that, you may have a backpack that you carried all your stuff to school, all your homework, whatever else from the previous night, and then you go, you put it in your locker, and then you just get out the things you're going to need for that next class period. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what other countries do to, to store your stuff between classes. Uh, the other thing is that if you live in a uh, climate that actually has snow and it gets cold, uh, you don't want to be bringing your coat uh, from class to class. You want to have a place to put it and so you put it in your locker um, again I, I don't know what other uh, other school systems in different countries use but this is what we use so yes lockers do exist um, they vary in size uh, the ones that I had in in uh, uh, it would be for us it, it was um, after primary school it was we call the um, first six years, six, seven years of school, uh, that's elementary school. After that, you have junior high or middle school and then high school. Um, high school is typically ninth grade through 12th grade when you graduate. Um, but um, my high school had 10th, 11th, and 12th, and my junior high had 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, the lockers that we had in our junior high were slightly smaller width-wise than the ones you see here. They were fairly deep, though, so you could get your stuff in, uh, but you didn't have a lot of width, and they packed them really close together. Uh, in high school, our lockers were wider, slightly wider than these ones, but they were shallow, uh, so they weren't as deep. You couldn't, you couldn't actually get, like, a person to fit. There's... Um, there's a joke, and you can probably find um, things on the internet about it, but, you know, st uh, stuffing kids in lockers. Uh, in my high school, at junior high, that wasn't possible. Uh, most of the kids, there was one kid I knew of who could actually get inside of his own locker in, in junior high. Um, he was shorter and very um, had a very small frame, and he was able to fit uh, into his locker. In high school or in junior high, I wasn't that big. A little, I was only a little bit bigger than him, and uh, I couldn't fit in the locker. So, um, I, 
it wasn't really a thing. And then the lockers we had in high school, you couldn't actually get somebody in and then close the door. They they were wider, so um, it was you know more like you could actually fit a, someone in there, but they weren't deep enough to put someone in and then close the door. So uh, they have been trying, and, and it may be that in the past the lockers were such dimensions that fitting a person in the locker was possible. Uh, and because of that, they've then changed the dimensions of lockers so that that's no longer a, a, the case. <clears throat> no longer the case, no longer an issue. Anyway, school lockers, yes, they do exist. They're incredibly useful. I don't know what else you would use. So I have, you'll have to let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you used instead of lockers. Uh, do schools send buses? Uh, yes. Uh, schools send buses. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of rural areas, um, and uh, our public transportation isn't necessarily as well developed as other countries. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, we don't necessarily have a bus that would get you to school on time. And um, so we do send these school buses out to pick people up and drop them off at, at the schools. Um, <clears throat> when I was in school, I lived close enough to my to all the schools that I went to that uh, um, I didn't need to ride a bus. I was I wasn't deemed far enough away. In fact, um, all through uh, elementary, all through junior high, I basically walked to school every day. When I was in uh, junior high, I did get a ride with my friend's family for, for a while um, <clears throat> until he started going to school early. I really need to remember to turn that off. <clears throat> but anyway, my, my friend's uh, parents, his, his dad was leaving for work at that time in the morning anyway, so we would hop in and he'd give us a ride to school. Uh, but then my friend started going to school early so I didn't catch a ride with his family anymore, um, and I just I walked to school. When I was in high school, um, I had friends who drove. They had their driver's license, so I never walked to my high school once. I just hitched a ride with my friends, um, and then I got my own driver's license and everything. So our, you know, that actually leads to one of the other slides I was talking about, where you know about high schools and parking lots. So, uh, yes, they do send the school buses. They come bright and early in the morning. And um, we do have, like, several areas, especially, <clears throat> as I said, in the more farming-related communities, where uh, the distance between your home and the school is just way too far to walk. Uh, and so they send out these school buses to pick up all the kids uh, that are too far away to walk to the school. Um, I'm... It probably varies depending on the school district as to how far they deem too far from the school to walk. Um, but it, it's not uncommon, uh, in, especially in uh, smaller communities where there's a lot of, like like I said, there's a lot of farming and it's very farming oriented in that community, uh, that the, um, the they may have one school that serves several cities. Uh, yeah, the cities may be very, very small, um, but instead of having one school per city, they'll consolidate and have one school that serves the entire community that may be made up of several cities. And because of that, um, they'll try to find they'll try to site the the school in a central location and then just bus the children to school. So yes, school buses they do exist; they are a thing. Um, Not so much for the high schools. Once the um, students start getting their own driver's licenses and cars and stuff like that, um, it, it uh, the amount of buses, they'll use them for extracurricular activities. Like to if you're doing sports, you'll ride a school bus from your school to another school to, to play a game. <clears throat> that kind of thing. Uh, but a lot of times the school the number of buses at a high school will be less, significantly less than what you'll find at like a junior high or, or even an elementary school. Again, the elementary school 
it depends on the area. Uh, they'll usually, um, from what I've seen, the, the elementary schools tend to have it, more buses just because they serve uh, a larger area. Um, anyway, moving on. Why is there no E in U.S. academic grades? I've asked this question myself. Um, just in case you were sitting there thinking, well, if you look on the um, the graphs I got, the charts I've got here, the current scheme we have letters A through F, um, and not all schools use this particular breakdown. There are some schools who won't won't award A pluses. A is the highest, so the A um, will cover the one hundred percent and uh, down to 93%, and then you have A minus B, B plus, B, etc. And some schools will, will incorporate that A plus grade. So it just, it just depends. Um, but prior to um, the current grading scheme that we used, we used the, sch the scheme that you see on the other side of the screen, which is E for excellent, S for satisfactory, N for needs improvement, and U for unsatisfactory. So the grading scheme was much simpler uh, several years ago. Um, I'd have to look up exactly when the grading scale changed, uh, but um, as I said, we have now a much more complex grading system that uh, allows the students to give, or allows the teachers to give the students a wider range of grades ba based on their performance. I don't know if that's better or what um, I grew up with this particular scheme uh, and the thing is is that I understand the reason for reasoning behind uh, dropping the E from the grading scheme when they redid the grading scheme they dropped the E because E used to be the best grade you could get and they didn't want the parents to um, mistake an E for a good grade at that point because um, Basically, at that point, the E would be a, um, a failing grade. Um, so it went; it would have gone from being the best grade you could get to being the absolute worst grade you could get. So they didn't want this, the teachers, or they didn't, the teachers didn't want the parents, the educators didn't want the parents to make that mistake and think, oh, my son is getting all excellence and then find out that he never graduated from school because um, he actually failed all his classes. So... Um, the other, you know, the other part of it probably is that F is for failure. Um, and so it's, go, it, it just has that, um, nice synergy where we, we have an F as the lowest grade. F is also the first grade, the first letter in the word failure. And so, um, if somebody fails, they get an F grade. That's, that's just it. So. Current grading scheme, prior grading scheme. That's why we don't have an E in our grading in our grading scheme in uh, our academic grades. All right, school clubs. School clubs exist. Yes, uh, clubs can be organized around just about anything: uh, sports, movies, chess, comics, debate, drama. You you name it. You can create a, a club about it. I'm pretty sure um, that. My, the schools that my kids go to have a D&D &D club. <clears throat> For those of you who are in the know, Dungeons & Dragons, uh, tabletop RPG uh, uh, game. I'm pretty sure that my kids' school now has an anime club. Um, anime is very popular in the United States right now, so that is not uncommon uh, to have an anime club. That being said, I think this picture is actually of like high uh, of not high school students, but maybe college students in a chess club. Anyway, there are several reasons why uh, schools have clubs. The schools want the kids to get engaged in extracurricular activities, be it sports or clubs. Now, um, there are <clears throat> uh, several reasons to join a club. I mean. 
if you're new to the school, you don't really know anybody, it's a good place to find people who like the same kind of things you do and might be good to pal around with, you can make friends and stuff. College entrances, or the entrance requirements for college, they do like to see sometimes, especially for scholarships, they like to see leadership um, d demonstrated by the prospective students. So in high school, you join a club, you might um, be, say, the president of that club. You can list your accomplishments as president of that club, like um, as president of the club, we won this award. As president of the club, our uh, you know we incre increased our membership by this much. As the president of the club, we have accomplished these things. And that looks good on a college resume. Um, career opportunities can also be a part of this. If you're interested in say electronics, uh, you may join an electronics club. You know, take classes and all that stuff. But um, being part of that club. Uh, you may find out about opportunities for further education. You may, you know, explore it as a possible career option for future. Like if I, uh, I don't know if I want to go into computers, maybe I'll join the computer club, see how that works out. Maybe get, you know, get some more information about what I like and what might be a possible future career path for me. Um, <clears throat> there is also some evidence. I don't know how much evidence. I don't know really. I, I didn't really want to spend the time looking and finding it because that's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do here. But school clubs have also been shown to help with at-risk students. So if the students have, you know, they may be at risk to join a gang, but this is a, a, a more productive uh, use of their time, more productive socially as well, where they're making friends that they won't get into illegal activities with. They're they're exploring their um, their interests and they're staying out of trouble. That kind of thing. So there there are a lot of reasons why the schools support these clubs. The other thing is is that <clears throat> um, in school uh, they only have so much money to go around between all the organizations, and so this is a way to have an organization at your school without necessarily relying on the funding from the school. It's, you know, if you if you know much about American schools, you know that football is king. So football gets pretty much the lion's share, unfortunately. Um, but a lot of times, the football ends up bringing in as well the lion's share of um, funding for the school, which is unfortunate. Personally, I can't stand American football. I think it, I think it's so boring. Now I have seen a couple of games that were really, really great. I, I and and those guys are definitely athletes worth. Um, if you're interested in football, go for it. They're they're worth watching. But if you don't really like football, hey, don't bl I don't blame you. Maybe I'll do a a video on uh, American football as we call it. Personally, I would much rather watch soccer. I find it much more entertaining. Um, I, I feel that it's faster paced, more strategy. Um, there's just so many times when you're watching football where it's hurry up, stop, hurry up, stop, hurry up, stop. Yeah, foot, um, soccer as we call it, football everywhere else. Um, it's just so much more dynamic game, so much more worth uh, watching. Anyway, school back to school clubs. Um, so schools can have these oper these uh, clubs. And the students can join them uh, for all the benefits that they bring without the school having to, you know, pony up the dough for it. Um, now, they may do things like uh, pay the instructor, but the instructor as part of the school, the instructor wouldn't necessarily be part of the club or it wouldn't be his job to do anything. It's just he's there to be the adult supervision for the club. Uh, and so he's getting paid by the school anyway. Um I think that's it for today. Uh, there was a lot to talk about, a lot to unpackage, so uh, that's it for this video. Uh, please, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Ask me about Americanisms that you don't get, and I'll try to get to them. Um, and uh, while you're at it, enjoy some of my other videos about uh, with my book reviews. And uh, yeah, later.